G'day, how you going? Ianapolis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my video where I like to teach beginners and advanced how to paint in acrylic. I want to get the size of the canvas up there before we get started and I'll also get some colours running up the screen that I'm going to use in this video. Now this, you will agree, you would have seen the picture in the opening credits. It's a beautiful painting and I'm here to show you that you can do it. So I've got a horizon line here. This is the only section of it you're going to see and I've got a beautiful opening of some sunlit sky through the canopy of the trees and it's going to be a road track type of thing here and everything leaning into the middle. So I've got some craft white with my putter on a brush and I'm going to mix it with some clear medium retarder over here. Now this is just going to slow down the drying time of this white acrylic paint and I just want to map in this part of the sky. So I'm just going to crisscross this into the canvas pushing it in there because this is going to allow the other colours that I put on top to blend smoothly. I just want to come to the tip of the brush and push that left and right and get it nice and thin. I also push some up here at the top area as well, just to get it a bit higher. Now I've got some Australian sienna here. This is sort of like an orangey colour. If you don't have it, use an Indian yellow and a red gold or a deep orange and make up your own, but I've got Australian sienna here. And I just want to use this to get as my sunset colour. So I'm just going to crisscross this again all over this white craft paint and matata and I'll be able to blend this and tone it down at the value I want with my blending brush because it's sitting on this white painted colour there. So just keep going here. Now I'm just going to grab a fan brush. Not this craft paint, I'm using this white stuff out of the tube, the better quality stuff, it's a little bit thicker. And I'm going to start in the middle here with my fan brush and put it on. This paint's wet and I'm just going to start pushing a glare onto this colour and it's going to slowly fan out. I'm going to fan it out with this brush and keep going just like that until I'm happy with the value. Now I've cleaned that brush, loaded it up again and I'm doing it again just to get some more brighter value there within this yellowy orangey area. There we go, look at that, it's not too hard. You can do this, okay? Now even might, let's just say, put it some kind of a cloud here. It's not going to have clouds, but it's some kind of representation of a cloud in this area. So we're just going to push that in there, grab a blending brush and a Chuck's Kitchen towel, best thing to wipe your blending brush with, and start blending that into that colour there as well. And just be sure to keep wiping your blending brush as you go along, and you won't have a drama. There we go, we'll get all this pushed in there. So I'll just keep blending this area all the way around with this brush until I'm happy. Got some hair in there. Those cats are leaving hairs everywhere. All right, we're just about there. That's pretty much the value that I want. Give it a dry. Just before I dry it, I want to get some of this colour over here so as I can have it coming through the trees. So what I'm going to do is grab some of this. I don't want the trees just to be a solid mess. So I'm just going to simply do this where I'm going to have some probably some tree windows and over here maybe a bit just dribbling up there. Now I'm going to get the horizon line drawn in which is about there and we've got a road coming here. And on the side of the road, you have a bit of flat ground and debris before you have your bush. So I'm gonna paint from that area. There's my road here, but I'm gonna paint beyond that with the brown and then put the road over it. Now I've got burn umber and black. Get the burn umber and a little bit of black mixed with it. I'm using my putter on a brush because it ain't going to muck around. I want this road painted in. I want to sit there a month of Sundays trying to get this road painted in. So I've dried all this. I want to get the horizon bit nice and sharp first, so about here. It doesn't have to be factory line straight and level. Let me get this. I'll come back with that. I want to get the road in, so... I'll go up to the very top with a detail brush just to get it. Nice dark brown colour. I'll just grab another brush 
to get the edge there done, just so as I can get a nice sharp line there. There we go. It can be a bit curvy and whatnot because it's a road, it's not exactly. There we go. Now I've got to dry this. Now I've got some mid-tone grey here. I want to use this just to map in the road. And I've got some black there to get some darker areas in it as well. But I'll do that once it's all done. Now the road is going from about here. That's the edge of my road. Can you see those lines? Yes. And somewhere about here and to there. So what I'm going to do now is just get this right up to the edge there. I don't want any of that dark paint on the edge. It'll look funny if you leave it there. Just there. Okay. Get some more. I want the edges looking, I want to try and, I'm looking here with my brush, but my peripheral vision is looking there. That way I know I'm going to go to that point so easy, bang, done. No mucking around. Again here, I'm looking here, but my peripheral vision's down to that dot there. I'm just going to stamp it in like so, and then I can get the actual road paint it in, I know where I'm going. Now if I go too much over there with the grey, I can simply grab the brown and cut it back to the area I need it to. Now if you like what you see so far, hit the thumbs up, share and subscribe. It helps my channel out a lot. And I want to thank everybody who supports my channel and watches me every week. Don't press too heavy. I've dried that paint under there, but it's still got some, probably some wetness with it, and I can rip the living buggery out of it if I'm not too careful. Now I'm going to grab some of this. I'll just pull it over here, and I'll get a bit of black into that just to darken it up. Get a darker value. And I want to just kind of, yeah, that's sort of dark, not dark enough. So I'm going to add a bit more black to that. And it doesn't have to be fully mixed, it can be marbly, meaning it's got all bits and bit bobs in there. There we go, it's an old tar road. Now if you want to, you can mask up your horizon area. Just like that, there we go. And I will add lights refracting on it later on as I need them when I'm doing all my light stuff. Now while that's drying, this brown paint, I want to sort of build that up on each side and start building up the depth for the side of the bush. Grab yourself any brush. I don't know what sort of brush this is, but I found it in my arsenal, so I'm going to use this. And I'm simply going to pick up the burnt umber with black in there. Not too much black. I picked up this brush because I tested it on the fridge door just to see how it's going to stipple like. Yeah, so I want to just kind of get up here, no mucking around, get this all dark here, all dark here, and then the same on the other side. The other side doesn't have to be so high, but I need that dark there to create the depth and allow the lights to show and shine through. Now I've done this with this brush, I'm going to grab the other flat brush that I use just to get the side of my road back again, because I feel I've probably lost some of that. That's looking all right Ian, I like that. Thanks little buddy. Now grab your flat brush that you used before, picking up the concoction you got here of burnt umber in there. And now I'm going to just get this back into there, somewhere like so. Back over here I want to kind of fix up my road as well. Bits just bleeding into the road there. It's all flat. It's raining outside again today here in Perth, Western Australia. The western side of Australia, those who don't know where Perth is, 
Look at the map of Australia, and I'm on the very left, down at the, probably the seven o'clock position. Now we've simply got all the background blocked in. Now we're gonna start with the furthest away trees and bring things forward, because the things in front are in front of what's behind it. So we're gonna start here. And I have the Australian Sienna and the Burnt Sienna. So I wanna start with light, so I'll grab some of this with the white and I'll just check the board just making sure it's going to stand out I'm using a filbert brush because I love the filbert brush just for doing simple basic trees that I can film for you people here because I just want it a little bit darker than this so it's going to sort of come from over the ground there and now you want to work out I want this sort of up here so I'm going to sort of come there and droop in front of the where's the other bit coming about I'm just going to put these there to give me a guide roughly where the opening is going to be so the opening is going to be about there okay you can understand that and then this is the lighter stuff and we'll gradually put some darker bits in here as well so we've got some beautiful openings up in here now just wet your brush the tiniest bit so it's going to transfer. See those ones didn't, now they are. If you have it too wet, you lose that bullshit look you're getting within your brush strokes. Okay, now I'm going to come down. I'm going to keep turning the brush. A little bit poking in the middle there. Reload it. Come down. Now I've I want to put some even lighter ones in here, I can, by just adding a bit more white into that, I'll just show you what I mean, way out here there might be just some lighter ones, see there, this is just an example, it's a tutorial so you need to know all these things, get some right on the edge of that, and I want to come thick now, So this is just the Australian Sienna and why I've got the burnt Sienna is because we're going to need some darker vibes of this. So I'm getting this, the very edge I want broken but here I can start getting it a little bit more solid like so. Play with it, look at pictures, get ideas, analyse, take your time with your art. Now down here I'm going to slowly start darkening that with the burnt umber the Australian Sienna. It's about the vibe there. I'll wet the brush a little bit just so it's going to transfer and I've got to come from about here back. I just want some bits. Now you can dry your work as you go. Everything on my board's still wet. I could have, would have, should have dried it. We've just got some little bits hanging out here. See how fine you can get them? It just makes your work look more bullshitty. Those of you who don't know my word bullshit, it's just a bigger, better way of saying wow. Instead of someone going, wow, I like that, they say bullshit. Did you paint that? That's my bullshit effect. A lot of people that follow me already know that, but there's a lot of new people coming all the time and they don't know everything that everyone else does. Leaving some of those different colours. Now that pole there, I'll leave that and I'll just grab the burnt sienna, pull some of this out, get a bit more of that in there I suppose. And just here, yeah, look at that, just join onto those darker bits. So you've got one, two, three colours going on here. Now that's why I added that extra yellow over there because see how you could see through the trees? If I want to see the sky and it's there, I want it to be there. I don't want it to be bare. I want it to be there. Get some of this up here. Now you've done that, I want a brush that I can get a lot of dark 
the dark trees coming in, get the darks there so I can bring the lights on top. I'm gonna to opt for my putter on a brush and I'm gonna go for the darkest green I've got, which is perylene green. If you do not have perylene green, simply grab your darkest green, a forest green, and tint it with some black or tone it with some black, whichever word is the right word, and get it the darkest value you can. And I simply, coming from off the painting, I wanna start getting this over. Now there's a bit of white there, so I'm gonna cover that up. Now, is this the right brush, or could have I been using something a bit different? Coming into there. Now, I'm feeling I don't like this brush. It's not gonna do what I'm doing. So I'm grabbing me fill, but I can just, oh, it's too wet. See, I put too much water with it. Get this over the whites. This is working. Get it there. You're blocking it in. And then we can, I'll get this back over there, and then we'll, get these leaves vibing out where we want them to be. And simply bring these in front of that brown stuff there. Get rid of all the white canvas you can see, just like that. Merge it into that brown and start going like this all over your sky area leaving little pockets of window so you can see the sky through it just so it, it just looks more fascinating and once you've done let's say this bit here right once you've done whatever look at it analyze it like i say and then just work out what bits need thickening up what bits can be tapered together with some lighter areas and so on and we can put all our light color greens over this once this is dry now, as you get into this brown bit, you want that, remember that flat bit I brushed in there? You want to kind of leave that area and you want this kind of just, this is just the dark, but you want this kind of coming down to that flat area, so to speak. Because there can be bits of logs, wood, rocks, debris, all sorts hanging down the edge here. This is sort of like, let's see if I can get it done in this one video file. Coming down the, and getting it coming from the flat bit there. Big thicker bits and some duller, not so heavier bits here and there. Big bits of grass, I mean brown coming up the hill there. And then I'm, what I've done here, I'm gonna simply do on the other side. Like I said, analyze, look here, there's a bit of unnaturalness there. I'll kind of bring it through a bit more. You don't want too many sky windows, but just enough peeking through like it looks real. Now this side is a little bit different because we've got all that there. So what we want to do is come get rid of all the white bits, get our darks where we want them. Now all that there, fork some over, get right over here. We want to bring this to that darker raw burnt umber and then bring some through just a bit just a bit down here, it's all gonna come through. Coming down here. And there's our. And then the same here. We got all this with some bush shrubbery stuff meeting that bit on the side of the road. Bits, some conveying out of it. And then all this is going to be simply blocked in. Like so, I'll get over all the white bits first, and then we'll use the brush stroke to get all these back over there. Pretty thick, but just enough to keep some little sky windows there. Now everything's had a dry. I've got some sap green here and some green oxide. So I want to lighten up some of the distant stuff with this, get it very light on the tops of all here, coming through, leaving the darks there, but this is just coming through. I need a, the tiniest bit of water in that, just so the transfer rate's gonna happen a lot better. Now I want pretty much all this bit here, further away getting on top of the dark bits there. 
and I'm just simply using this brush like I said but you can go more detail if you like with another brush all the way up here this color bits and pieces now the more you can understand where these colors are going the more visually your painting is going to look crackingly hot bits and bobs up here get all this coming down here now this is going to have highlights on it so it might look a bit weird at the moment but once we highlight it it'll look accordingly I'm just going to probably put bits and bobs of this in here but I'll probably come back to that later when I'm doing that because I still got to put some tree trunks in there as well okay now picking up this green oxide it's a soft body paint this one so it's pretty good for detailing thickness of the brush you want this just very dotty there we go leaving that first color green there you're just pretty much highlighting it with this one that's better, that's softer, look at that. Getting the right colours, the right brush. Just because I'm using this brush doesn't mean it's the right brush. That's the right brush for me. The right brush for you is the one you're happy with and the one that's doing what you want it to do for your visuals. Because at the end of every painting, you're the one that's got to analyze it and be happy with what visual effects you've just created on your canvas. Back to this side, I want to get some of this sap green and sit on top of that dark greens here, just here and there. So I want to make all oh, this coming through. You're leaving a lot of the darks there. Now what I want to do is quickly scatter this where I feel it needs it and then whack in the trunks and then they can be set back with the appropriate colors. What I'm doing with this color that I'm putting on now, I'm putting it where I'm gonna have the pale of green. I'm still gonna come in here with some sap green, not sap green, it's forest green. This is a lighter green as well. Okay, let's get some trunks in here before we get too carried away. I want to get the right amount of burnt umber with some black in there. Now I've just got a dagger brush here and hopefully this will give me a nice, reasonable, effective trunk. And the trick is to try and keep them as straight as possible to make them look more real. So we'll get the main one about here. And he can come right up. Now dry what you've done if you haven't. Right up there. Okay, I've gone and put some burnt sienna with the mix. So I want another one about here in the... Somewhere up here coming up there. Skinnier one's way back here. All the way up to the top of the painting. Now the bottom of these trees determines how far back and forward they are within the bush. I'll get this one a bit darker so you can see it. Well, not darker, but a lighter colour on it. Put a few over here, I want a nice big thick one coming right here all the way up. Over here. Just there. Here somewhere. Yeah. 
you could probably put some bits of whatever. I'm getting the darker bit now. Bits and down here you might want some debris, whether it's rocks, clumps of crap, just the darker value. I'll get a bit more darker there. That's a bit too bright, that one. There we go. Getting some dark bits and bobs under there. Now I'm grabbing the burnt sienna and I'm getting this brush, hopefully this is going to do it, make a lot of, um, oh, it's not quite doing it. I want like a lot of fallen leaves that are just dropped everywhere. It's leaves everywhere. Turn the brush as you do it so you don't get any patterns happening. From that dark brown scattering out, that's where they're mainly gathered, because whatever cars are driven on this road, the wind's pushed them to the edge of the road like it normally would. And they've all gathered here, and some of them obviously for the painting's sake, are gonna be just sitting all over the road like this. Now something you can, would and should do is grab yourself a detail brush. Just to see all the stampy ones, just to hide all that, just get some deliberate ones on with a brush scattered throughout, just to give it a bit more realistic vibe about it. So you're breaking up that especially at the front because they're bigger here. So you can use this brush to make some bigger leaves just sitting on the road here. And you're just scattering it throughout all that stampy bit just to get rid of that cheap look about it. You've gone and given it a more charismatic vibe of goodness. Or as we say, bullshit. But yeah. Getting some white and get a lighter value of that burnt sienna. Not too bright. Now we've got to get the light piercing through. We're probably, because there's some openings there, probably get some of this just dotting about here. Look, watch what I do. And then come onto the road a bit. bit here and then we've got some light cascading onto the road here just like that try not to get round it I mean straight edges on it I'm trying to get them bowly shape <laughs> probably just a, a bit refracting here somewhere. We've just got some light coming across the road there. And then obviously up here, we've got a nice band of lighter areas coming across the road here as well. Fix some of that up if you need to. Now I've got my forest green, I've just put a little bit of yellow in it, not too much, and I want to get my colours on here now. So leaving those darks where you want and get this dark green on there. This is my dark green now of the actual trees. Those trunks we're going to sit back as well. Stuff coming in front of this one. You would want something from there coming right in front of the bottom of that trunk to kind of sit it down. Don't get rid of all your darks. 
Now this, this stuff here was in the front, so this stuff now is gonna leaf in front of it just like so. There we go. Leaving some of the darks there. I'm gonna get this side done and quickly highlight it just so you get a vibe of how the painting's coming along. And then I'll do the same on the other side, but there is some highlights of that sun glare coming through that I'll need to show you within this painting as well. So I don't wanna leave that out. Now I'm gonna use the cadmium yellow and get me highlight there with this forest green. Don't want it too yellow though. Now let's have a look here. Uh, I wanna get, I haven't dried anything yet. Very, look how, See how thick those stamp marks are compared to this? This is a lot lighter. It can get a bit monotonous and make you start pressing heavy because you want to hurry, but just don't do that. That's why I said there's no rush. I want to get this in front there, see sitting on those dark greens, just leafing out and then coming in front of this bush here. There we go. This is just simple art, acrylic art that a beginner can do. And if you feel it's a bit out of your league, it's not. You just gotta simply practice. Practice is the key to everything. Keep scratching into the yellow part of the pile where I mixed it. In front of the trunk, reaching out here, get creative. Start, when you're not painting, if you're gonna endeavor on your art journey and you wanna be an artist, art isn't just at the easel painting. You're an artist 24 seven in my eyes. When you're out and about, analyze what you like to paint, trees, their behavior, their shadows, their patterns, their shapes, all these sort of things. So when you're putting them together within a painting, you sort of got the vibe going on. I'm always doing that. Sometimes I remember to say it in my tutorials, but sometimes I forget. And you can just see how bubbly and beautiful, you know, I don't want to put the dead grass color in this because it's kind of a sunsetting color, um, but you do see the vibe of a lot of dead wood colour within trees as well. The leaves, the foliage. Now I've got to, I want to get some beautiful bullshit happening here with the glare coming through here and I'm going to show you how I do that. Now I've got the green oxide and I've added some white to it to mute it. I've already done a little test bit there just to see if it's gonna work. And just little bits here, like this, this color here, I want bits of this, where are we? Getting hit with light. See how I've got 
the light coming across the road, it's like coming through. So I'm imagining some lights. Pan down on here and hit this. This is how your mind thinks the further you get through your art journey. It's come across the road, it's hit that bit there, and there's another pocket here, probably getting hit by light as well. But very easily does it. It says some of this are getting hit by light, some of this not too much. Where are we? Is this the light glistening on top of some of these bits here? I want to have a look and just see if that's looking the part. Yes. Watch what's happening here. See lights just kissing the tops of some of this stuff. I've done a bit there, it was a bit heavy, but. Just knowing what to do within your trees and stuff, it adds a bit more realism. You sort of got light there. And probably just the tips here can have some light hitting them. Now I just want to get some light coming from here, fanning across there. I'm grabbing the Australian Sienna and I've put a little bit of that burnt Sienna with it. Now I haven't got much on my brush, just enough where I can get like, I don't know, something. I'll get it on there. I want this coming in a straight line like that. Coming down here. Can come a little bit wider as we get to the bottom. And I want to get some maybe just here. It's faint, but it's there. It's coming right in. It can come behind that tree and come in front of that one. It's a bit like mist. I don't know, should it be in front of that tree or behind it? I do want it to kind of come down further now here, like a bigger towards the side of the painting there. There we go. The same with that one. Just yeah, just do that even. There we go, look at that. Look at, oh, I could see a little bit there that needs to happen. It's got to come from all the way up here. I hope I don't ruin it. I better stop. I'm just grabbing my dagger and the black paint because these, um, remember these bits of wood and stuff we put in here? I want to just accentuate them. They need to be sitting on black stuff, like so. It's any old way. Can I have something jutting out there? Some junk. Some bits of wood, whatever they are. Maybe some stones or rocks here, just near the edge of the road there. Highlight them. There we go. <laughs> it's that burnt sienna that I'm highlighting it with, I have put a bit of white with it because I feel it needs it, and this stuff here can be, I don't know, bits of highlight in there as well, but leaving the blacks. Just like that junk. Same over here. Highlight some of the rubbish on the ground here. Now let's just finish this tree so it's not so bland. Grabbing the forest green and some more of the cadmium yellow, making a lot more highlighted color. 
and just very little of this now, not too much. Let's just see what we can get here. I'm going to concentrate where I was getting the light through. Maybe this will help. It pays to step back, analyse, come back and do some more brush strokes. Because you can have your head down stroking away and you're blind at what's happening around you. So I'm feeling blind now, so I'm going to step back, analyse, look at it and feel where, okay, I could see some more happening that needs to be here. So I'm going to simply do that. And that's what it's all about. Sink that log back we just done. See what this done before it was there. Can even have some on the ground there. Now you know where I scratched all that orangey sunshine colour through and I thought, oh no, I might be ruining it. What I'm doing is just getting this highlighter colour and just doing over that part just so it doesn't look like I've bodgingly ruined my painting, hopefully. And next to the other green, it'll be more highlighter, that's all. Down here, a lot of this is highlighted from that light shining through, and you've still got the red. Because don't you worry, the best of people out there turn their paintings to snot as well. They just probably don't want to admit it, but I wouldn't be too shy to admit it. If you snotted something up, big deal. You learn from it. See, now I know I can put a, a ray of light shining through a forest and use just the highlighter colour over it to sit it down. I wouldn't come into this bit here Something else simple I want to teach you. See how we've got the trunk? It can look flat. Let's give it some dimension. Let's get a darker branch. Come from a bit in the middle of it and then start just venturing out into your canopy there. Okay? Come up. Cross your sky window. You get a lot of this crisscrossing everything here and there. All right, I just want to load up my script liner, twisting it, paint right at the point. We'll put a signature on here. And thank you to all my YouTube members and my patrons who support my channel every month. Very much appreciated. It's people like you that help my channel get bigger and better. Okay, let's whack a frame on that and see how she looks. There we go, a beautiful sunsetting kind of forest there. Not too shabby, is it? We've got a lot of things happening there, and I know you can do it. Well, what a lot of fun that was. Beautiful, colourful exercise there, something different. And if you like what I'm doing, you tell your friends, but if you don't, you tell everybody. Also, check out this other video of mine. Goodbye, good luck, and good on ya.